What's up, guys? Hello. Hello, hello. Um, it is a beautiful day here. Um, it's cloudy, but the temperature is perfect. Um, and there's just a little bit of sun peeping through, so it's not so hot, okay? Uh, there was a lot of sun earlier. I did take my dogs out earlier, so they got a chance to get some sun. Um, but the sun gets, oh, is that a bee on the inside? Oh my God. Hold on. We have a real bee issue here and it's illegal to kill them in Germany, which I get, but they're all over my windows. So I think I need to call maintenance and figure out how I can get rid of them from around my windows. They're seriously so bad this year. It's terrible. Hi, Autumn. It's, they're so bad. So uh, just a few weeks ago in our spare room, my husband found four bees crawling on the inside of the window. So we had to close the window panel. Um, there's two of them in my kitchen window and now there's one in my living room window. And they're just, I mean, I, I remember last year in the summertime, I couldn't even sit outside of my porch because there was so many bees. I don't know how to repel them. I don't. Um, but anyway, <laughs> that's that story, okay? Um, so it's quarter to six. Um, it's really, really, really nice weather outside. Temperature's perfect. I think I'm gonna take my dogs to a trail. Um, Tuli doesn't walk though. You know, it's really irritating. You got two dogs and one of them really loves to run and go fast and play, which is my Australian Shepherd. And then you have your smaller dog that, man, she just, she's just snail pacing along. It's irritating. Anyway, um, I wanted to pop on because I wanted to share this with you before I forget. Um, so I was getting my car fixed the other day and I was at the, uh, the auto mechanic place and I was getting my car fixed the other day and um, I actually, I made a German friend. I did, I made a German friend a few weeks ago. It only took me two and a half years in Germany and I made a German friend. But anyway, um, she is um, the manager at this at this place, and she lived in the states for eight years, so she's very familiar with American culture, and obviously as well as German culture. You know, she's a citizen of both. And um, anyway, we were chatting, and she actually used to be also in network marketing when she lived in the States. And so she's very entrepreneurial, very entrepreneurial. And we got to talking about that. And then um, she's a single mom. So I remember asking her if you could do anything, anything at all that you wanted what would you do? Let 
This color is an oldie but goodie. I asked her what she would do if she could do anything she wanted and she said if money wasn't an option um if it didn't matter about money at all she would open her own salon doing like blowouts lashes um makeup and other things and i said that's really awesome so of course my next question was what's stopping you <laughs> You know, I, I don't know a lot about um, what it takes to be able to start a business here in Germany, but uh, I do know that in the United States, you know, there's multiple ways that people could go about doing it. Is the land of our, yeah, yeah, they really do. And I actually asked her that question too. And um, so like in the United States, I mean, there's, a few different ways to go about starting a business. You can, if you're looking to start a salon, for example, um, you can go to a bank, you can ask for a business loan, um, you could maybe try to raise the money, some of it anyway. You could uh, open the business out of your home. Some people uh, convert certain rooms out of their home into uh, certain businesses. You can um, rent space, you can rent uh, buildings, space, office space and buildings. You can do it that way. Um, there's, there's a few different ways you can do it. So I asked her, I said, well, what's stopping you? And she explained to me that here in Germany, you have to have, uh, you have to have certain, um, well, first you have to have certain licenses, which is also the same in the United States, but, um, the money, like, you have, if you, you have to first get the money to get the building, right? And not everybody has a, has that kind of money to get a, the building or the office space, which is understandable. A lot of people in the U.S. don't have that money either. Uh... So then I asked her, what about running this out of your home? Because I know in the United States, a lot of people will run salon services out of their home. As a matter of fact, during 2020, um, <laughs> because everything was shut down due to reasons we all know, Thank you. It's called Strawberry Shortcake. I haven't used this color in a really long time. It's one of my real old G's. Old G, old, old G's? <laughs> this is one of my real OG's. Um, I've had this color forever. Um, I know, so in 2020, even people who could perform certain salon services out of their home, like massage therapists, um, hairstylists, um, I don't know, estheticians for certain things like eyebrow waxing, uh, nail techs. So a lot of those people <laughs> really wanted to offer these services out of their home. And during 2020, they were not allowed to offer those services. If they were caught, they actually could lose their license to perform those services ever in the future, which means they would have lost their business completely um, and any opportunity to be able to do that again. So that it was really strict. Um, but in the United States, like aside from what happened a few years ago, if you want to run a business out of your home, you can run a business out of your home. Nobody's there to tell you you can't do that. Um, but here in Germany, you can't do that. You have to go through a very specific procedure to be able to do that. And you also are required to have a designated customer only parking space. 
that's the that's what kind of blew my mind when she said that to me because um like my sister-in-law is a massage therapist and she does her business out of her home now and they just use her driveway like <laughs> she doesn't have a designated customer space for people to park they just park in her driveway right um or on the side of the road in front of her house wherever they want to park right and it's not a big deal but in germany you can't do that so in germany she told me it was 8,000 euros, which equals out to be almost 9,000 US dollars to acquire said specific customer parking space, okay? So there's the first thing. And I said, okay, I understand. Again, same same idea as a, uh, getting like a business loan or something. Now everybody has those means and those funds to be able to do that. So I said, well, what about if you go to their home? And she said she could do that. Um, she said she uh, she could go to their home, uh, no problem. But here's the here's the kicker on that is how would you promote how would you promote yourself that you have this lash business? or that you will do blowouts for someone. How do you promote that? Well, <laughs> um, most of us here in the United States, the first thought is social media, right? Like you will, um, ah, oh no, my phone, I thought that was gonna fall, oh my gosh, and that would've just ripped y'all to the ground, ripped y'all to the ground, ground, okay. Um, <laughs> Most people, if I say that to you, if I ask you how you're going to promote your business, uh, you just opened up a business to do um, lashes and blowouts for women in their home. You're going to travel to their home and do that. How are you going to promote your business? Social media, right? That's what everyone would think is because social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, are uh, free okay there's actually a TikTok account that i follow because i think she's just i love her content um her name is Teresa van dam she's uh, a hairstylist i think she's kind of nicknamed like that TikTok stylist because people fly from all over the country i think she's in illinois um people fly from all over the country to go get their hair done by her she's a color specialist like it's just crazy if you guys don't follow her account you should at least go check it out because she built her she she uh didn't start her business on tiktok but that's how she promotes her business and it blew up for her and she got brand collaborations and all sorts of things through using a a free platform right to promote her business that's what people do. They use social media to promote their business. Well, in Germany, you can't do that. And I said, why? Why can't you do that? Like, why can't you post on social media that you have decided to start? Because she has her certification. She's got, like, she's got her beauty certs. She's got her licenses to be able to do lashes and all that. And I said, okay, why, why can't you post that on social media? that you will go to people's homes and do this business, right? Do uh, work your business. German government won't allow it, okay? So one of the restrictions here, and this is the way she explained it to me, and this is also the way that I understood it. Um, if you have a business, like a lash business, and you want to go to other people's homes to promote that business, okay? Uh, or, or you wanna go to other people's homes, that's fine, but how are you gonna promote it? 
you can't do it on social media because going the German government says that going into people's homes to provide a service is a door-to-door -door business. So you guys remember like that 1950s vacuum sales <laughs> person, okay? Do you remember those like, okay, do you know like the stereotype or the, the story about the 1950s vacuum salesman or uh, even more recently, you know, or like the Jehovah's Witness that come to your house and like try to se essentially sell you on their religion, okay? Um, or even even back in like the 50s when Mary Kay, for example, uh, they went door to door, right? And I, I know that still today, Mary Kay consultants, a lot of them, uh, most of them are on are doing it just through social media, but a lot of them still kind of do door-to-door -door type stuff, meaning like they will still put together little sample packets and put them on their neighbor's doors or, you know, go to neighborhoods and put sample packets on doors and stuff like that. So it's, it's like a form of door-to-door, -door, right? And, um, but in Germany, you can't do that. You cannot do social media. You ha it has to be as a door-to-door. -door. And, I, my mind was blown. I said, really? She said, yeah, you, you have to like actually physically go door to door and let people know, like talk to somebody face to face and let people know that you have this business and, you know, promote it that way. Do you know how many doors you would have to go knock on <laughs> to reach enough people to first get someone to say yes, okay? So sales is a numbers game. And you know how many doors you'd have to go knock on to first get somebody to say, to say yes, first of all, okay? How many no's you're gonna get? And that's not just no's from behind a screen where you feel kind of guarded because the screen creates like, a barrier, right? So they call people keyboard warriors, the ones that cyber bully and hide behind a screen and um, talk a bunch of trash behind a computer. Keyboard warriors, right? It, it, the, the screen, the phone, the computer creates that barrier. So when people tell you no, it almost doesn't feel as personal, almost, right? But if someone tells you no to your face, if you get rejected to your face, that is like whoosh, I mean, that's a whole nother ball game that people are feeling. That's a whole nother world of emotions that people are experiencing and it's not good emotions, okay? That's also why I remember the days when I was in Mary Kay and I remember being taught to do um, warm chatter, okay? Now, I'm a social person, I don't care. I will go up and I, you know, I'm, I'm not great in big crowds, but I also, at the same time, it's really weird. I, I don't also at the same time have an issue going up to just some random person and starting conversation. I do it all the time walking my dogs. I do it all the time walking my dogs. I will just like make a random, I'll insert myself into the conversation for a minute. I just, I'll make a random comment. Not like a rude or disrespectful comment, but you know, I just, I'll make a funny comment or, or whatever, right? And uh, <laughs> I do it all the time. But warm, the concept of warm chatter scared a lot of people. And a lot of people were convinced that that is why they could not be successful in Mary Kay is because of the warm chatter thing. Because you also had these leaders and these directors telling you that you had to expand your network and part of doing that, and this is also before the days that Mary Kay transitioned into social media, but the, you know, back in 20... Uh, 16 okay um, you were being told to warm chatter uh, which an example of that would be if you're at the grocery store you're in the yogurt aisle and another woman is in the yogurt aisle and you're browsing yogurt and you turn to her and you ask her opinion what her favorite yogurt is and the idea behind that is to start a mini conversation in hopes that you find something to connect with and maybe you ask her to 
um, follow you on social media or uh, so you can stay connected or maybe you just hand her your business card. Okay, another idea behind the warm chatter thing was um, to, and of course they always told you be genuine, this always was supposed to be genuine, but the idea of walking up to a stranger and saying, hey, you know, paying them some kind of compliment. Hey, your makeup is so beautiful. And, you know, go up to somebody who A, is wearing makeup or B, like <laughs> that you actually do think her makeup is beautiful or compliment her shoes or her outfit, but make sure it's coming from a genuine place, okay? If you think her shoes are the ugliest thing that you've ever seen created in the entire world, don't go and make a fake compliment because people can always tell when you're not being genuine. People can tell when what you're saying to them isn't the truth, <laughs> okay? People can read right through that, all right? <laughs> so again, the concept is um, to obviously be genuine, but go up to a woman, compliment her, her shoes, her makeup, something, and say, hey, um, I'm looking for, I'm trying to get samples out to 10 women today. I think that you have incredible style. Um, I'd love your opinion on this lip gloss. Here's my card with a, um, a sample attached to it. I would love, um, if you have just a few minutes, could you run into the bathroom and try it on? And um, let me know what you think. And obviously, oh, like you could see how that kind of conversation would be nerve wracking to so many people. And like I said, I am a very social person. I will talk to anybody about anything. I don't care. Like I will walk up to anybody and just start talking to them about anything. Okay. Anything. Um, but I didn't want to warm chatter. I didn't want to do that. Okay. I didn't want to go up and ask somebody if they'd be willing to go into the bathroom and try this lipstick on. Okay. And cause usually the answer was no to begin with. So what I then diverted to was like women are like, no, I don't have time to go into the bathroom and put this lipstick. What are you talking about? Okay. Maybe one out of like a hundred women were like, yeah, yeah, I want to try this. And they're so excited and they go try it. Right. But more often than that, um, more, <laughs> more often than that, I'd be like, Hey, you know, take this, I'd love to give you my card with this lipstick sample. Can you take it home and try it on next time you're putting some makeup on and just let me know what you think. Text me, um, you know, text me a photo of you wearing it and tell me what you think about it. And it sounds innocent enough, right? It does. But, um, that's nerve wracking. That is so nerve wracking for people. Okay. So nerve wracking for people. So, when social media exploded in a way for people to build their business, because I also remember in 2016, I was getting involved in other network marketing companies in 2016 and um, social media was really blowing up for people and their business. Because remember when I asked you, can you imagine how many doors you'd have to knock on for somebody for, to get even one person just to say yes? because it's a numbers game. The first person you ask isn't gonna say yes, unless it's like your mom and she's like, okay, I wanna support you. Or your aunt and she's like, I wanna support you, so yes, right? But usually those initial yeses are like, I wanna support you, not, <laughs> I mean, they're not like die hard for what you're selling, okay? Not yet anyway. But you had to walk to so many, like you'd have to walk to probably 25 or 30 houses before somebody even maybe said maybe or a yes, okay? On social media, so to really build your business door to door, face to face, can you imagine how many people you'd have to go through face to face? I remember when AT&T, when I worked for them, I remember when they opened up this IHX, I think is what it was called. I don't remember exactly. I, IHX or something, whatever whatever the acronym was for it. But basically it was in-home uh, wireless service. And AT&T created this position back in 2018 um, of home reps, which were door-to-door -door reps, okay? It was representatives who had a company car, who drove to 
um, neighborhoods and they had a list of leads that were generated through some kind of lead generator, okay? And they went to these neighborhoods, these homes, these businesses, okay? And uh, they, but mostly residential, and they would speak to people about their internet providers, their cell phone providers, and the goal was obviously to get them to swap to AT&T services. And everybody wanted this position. Everybody, when AT&T opened this position, everybody was going hard for this position. Oh my God. And sometimes in some stores, certain reps would be picked for this position and they would create a lot of jealousy among the rest of the representatives and the stores because they really wanted it. Um, and people wanted it because it was more um, active, I guess. Like instead of staying in a store, you're driving around, you had a little bit more freedom. It was a little bit more flexible. You had weekends off because they didn't want you going into people's homes on weekends. Um, you had nights off because you know you, you can't be going to people's houses at nine o'clock at night talking to them unless you have the appointment set up. But generally you just can't be going up knocking on people's doors at nine o'clock at night and being like, hey, can I sell you some internet, okay? So the hours were what people wanted, the schedule was what people wanted, the flexibility, the car, and out, like, and you actually did make more money if you could, if you were good, you sold, you made more money. And when AT&T opened that position up, everybody went hard for it, and I could have cared less about it. I mean, I wasn't a good candidate for it at the time because 2018, my life was a freaking mess, and I really just didn't even care about my job anymore, to be honest with you. But um, I also just didn't care about that position. I cared enough about my job to keep it, but I didn't care. Even if I was like, <clears throat> I, I just, I didn't care anything about that position. And somebody had asked me why they're like, why aren't you excited about this position? Like, how come you don't even like care about it? I said, cause I don't want to go door to door. And for me, it wasn't about the rejection face to face. Because I don't really care about that either. When you spend a lifetime of people disliking you and bullying you and making fun of you, by the time you're 36 years old, <laughs> somebody saying no to a, a product or a service you're offering them doesn't really tend to phase you anymore, okay? You develop a pick your battle skin and um, you know, that, you know, someone tells you, what's, you offer somebody a service that you have and what's the worst they're gonna do? What's the worst that can happen? Okay, um, they're gonna tell you no. Okay, big deal. So, I've been told worse things in my life than no. <laughs> so, I didn't care to go for that position because I didn't wanna go door to door. And it wasn't, it was because that felt very invasive to me. That felt very invasive to me to, from a business standpoint, AT&T said, okay, we need to figure out how to reach more people and drum up more business. And we're not drumming up enough business just simply by the people that are walking into our stores. Because there was a point in time when people walking into the stores were, um, more than half of them were only there for tech help and bill help. It was a very small percentage of people coming into the stores with an intention to buy. And if somebody doesn't have an intention to buy when they come in, it's not impossible, but it makes it very tricky to try to change their mind. You really gotta sell some value in something, especially when you're trying to persuade someone to spend hundreds of dollars on something. Not to mention the time. People value their time. So, it felt, this isn't a story about at and but I'm just saying it felt invasive to me for at and from a business standpoint, I guess it worked, but from a customer point of view, I would not want someone coming to my home trying to sell me internet or offer me or trying to get me to switch to another cell phone co uh, company. Now those AT&T reps would have told you, no, that's not what we do. We go to people's houses who already have the service and then we just talk to them about the internet. And just the, like, but still, it's, it's invasive. If, if they were interested 
in any of the services, they would have come into the store themselves. But to, to take it upon themselves to go, to, for the company to take it upon themselves to make a position for representatives to go to people's homes door to door, and it's not a new concept, okay? Door to door is something that's been around for ages, but we live in a world today where people don't want to be solicited to. They don't want to just be sold to. And they certainly do not want you coming to their home to sell them products. Okay. Um, but to circle this all back around, I kind of got off on a little tangent there. To circle this all back around, AT. AT&T, I'm sorry, oh my God, I got AT&T on the brain. Uh, to circle this back around, my friend here in Germany, when I asked her what she would do if she could do anything she wanted, and she said she'd open up a salon, and we talked about like how she was going to promote that business, you can't do it on social media here in Germany. You have to go door to door for something like that. Now, in the United States, that concept is absurd. How many people do you know that are promoting anything that they want through social media? People are selling stuff, it's, they post it on social media. People are, they're selling their clothes, they're selling stuff out of their home. Um, look at Facebook Marketplace, okay? People are looking to buy, people are selling. Go to Facebook Marketplace. I have a friend, she just started a homeschooling consulting business for people in New York State who are looking to homeschool their children. Um, homeschooling, people are doing it more and more these days and people have a lot of questions and they need a lot of guidance and direction because it's a new journey for a lot of people that are starting their journey. She just opened up a homeschooling consulting business. How do you think she's promoting her business? It's through social media. Okay. Um, people who own salons, they promote themselves on social media. Uh, people who sell eBay, stuff on eBay, things like that. It, it's still being promoted on social media. Oh, go, to go take a look at my Etsy store, my eBay store, my whatever, 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 right? The opportunities that we have available to us in the United States are some of the most abundant opportunities in the world. You can decide, if you live in the USA, you can decide to open up your homeschool, or, well, yeah, because I'm thinking about her now. You can decide to open up a business. You can decide to be a homeschool consultant. You can decide to be a makeup art, a traveling makeup artist. You can decide to open up uh, any business idea that you have and you can promote it on social media. I have a friend who's in real estate. She promotes a lot on social media, okay? Me with my makeup, I promote through social media. I think, I think so many people take that opportunity for granted. not taking advantage. A lot of people have these ideas that they want to do with their life. A lot of people have dreams for their life. They have visions like starting certain businesses, okay? Cake baking businesses, photography businesses, makeup businesses, um, consulting businesses, dog training businesses, 
craft businesses, making crafts, selling their crafts, all these things. People have these ideas and they're amazing ideas. They're lucrative ideas. But they get stuck on promoting those ideas. Why? Because they're scared to put themselves out there on social media. They're scared to go and make posts. They're scared to do videos. They're scared to reach out to people and just let them know that they have a business. Hey, so-and-so, I just wanted to let you know that um, I'm a freelance makeup artist. If you ever want a free makeover so I can build my portfolio, please let me know. And leave it at that. If they respond, they respond. If they don't, they don't. If they say yes, amazing. Go give them their free makeover. Pamper them. Make them feel beautiful. And let them know that you would love to help a few of their friends also so you can build your portfolio. Once you have a portfolio, then you can go back to those people and ask them, let, like, you can let them know how much you charge for different makeup looks, whatever. And just let them know that you're available for them for whatever it is. Weddings, proms, date nights, pamper date, whatever, right? But people are too scared to reach out. They're scared of people telling them no. They're afraid of failure or they're afraid of success. That's a thing. Because they don't want to put themselves on the camera. They don't want to go live. They don't want to make a video. They don't want to make a post. They don't want to make a reel. They don't want to take pictures because they're like, I don't look good on camera. I never know what to say. I sound like I'm babbling. Um, people are making fun of me. My hair is a mess. My makeup doesn't look good. My house is an aesthetic. I'm too fat. I'm too thin. I'm too this. Whatever it is, right? And you come up with all these lies in your head. Nobody cares about your house, first of all, okay? Nobody cares. Just find somewhere that is like, all you need is like a, a three foot clean space, okay? Your house is a mess, brush it to the side, clear it off, okay? When you're filming, you just need like a clean wall or a wall with some pictures hung up and that's it, okay? Nobody can see your floor and your kitchen and your bathroom and your bedroom. Nobody sees that stuff, okay? So your house has an aesthetic, who gives a damn? Okay, your makeup isn't good. You're, you know, you feel like your makeup isn't good or you're not wearing makeup. Okay, go, go all natural, baby. And guess what? If you want to just pop on a little color on your lips, I can help you with that. All right. Um, if you're like, I don't have time to put makeup on just to do a live video. Girl, listen, just put on some lipstick. It don't smudge. And I got you. I can help you with that. Okay? Message me. I'll send you my link. Whatever it is, it comes from people not having the confidence in themselves, the belief in themselves. What I want to end with this to say, because I got to take my dogs out and figure out what the hell I want to do for dinner, is... Don't, don't pass up these opportunities that we have here available to you in the United States. Don't take that for granted. You have this idea in your mind that you want to start this business. Okay. 
By the way, if you do enjoy doing enough, By the way, if you do enjoy doing makeup and you would like to do makeup on people and help people feel beautiful with their makeup, um, you can definitely chat with me because I can help you start your own makeup business for $65, okay? Just saying. But you have this idea for a business and you're scared how you're gonna promote yourself. You have social media at your fingertips for free. Stop letting that opportunity pass you by because you're too scared to put your face on a camera. Because there's a lot of people that wish they could do that same opportunity. My friend here in Germany said that to me. She said, I wish I could use social media to promote myself for lashes and hair. But she can't because she's restricted by the German government. And that's when I did ask her, I said, do you think that's a reason why, or do you think that's a concept why people from other countries still view the United States as a land, a, a land of opportunity? And without skipping a beat, she said, yes. Because in the United States, you can use your social media to promote your business, your ideas, your thoughts. Enough! Thank you. Good girl. Don't sleep on that, guys. You deserve more. You deserve to give yourself every opportunity, every chance that you can give yourself to be what successful looks like for you. So do it scared, do it nervous, okay? I can promise you nobody cares what you look like or what your house looks like, okay? Ugh, freaking hair everywhere, are you serious? Okay, um, look at, if you go back and scroll and you look at half, more than half of my videos, um, <laughs> I'm like still in my pajamas and back when my hair was long enough to put up in messy buns, I had messy buns, okay? A lot of my videos, my hair is pulled back and you can clearly tell I haven't washed it in like four days because my roots are super greasy. Like nobody cares. They just want to know what you have to say. They want to know what you can offer them. Use the resources available to you and understand that not everyone has those same opportunities and they wish that they did. They wish that they did. And you have them. And if you are not taking advantage, you're wasting opportunities. You're wasting a chance for you to be successful in a manner that looks that that is successful to you you're doing a disservice to you and your family and your future self and your future family okay so i'm gonna leave you with that but guys you all have you all have it already in you to be the best version of you that you can be. To give yourself a secured future. 
But if you're not taking advantage of it, because you're worried about what other people think, just know that other people wish they had your privileges, your opportunities, and your chances. So what are you gonna do with your opportunities? What are you going to do with your resources that you have available to you for free and abundant? What are you going to do to make your dreams come true?